Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, thank you, Lord. Praise. Hallelujah. We thank God for yet another day. Please excuse me. I'm a little bit, uh, have a little cold, but God is still good. He's still worthy to be praised. Um, we welcome those that are watching by Facebook. Uh, we thank you for joining Partakers Church of Christ Ministry Sunday School on this morning. We are pastors, Pastor Michael J. Isaac Sr., First Lady Angela Isaac. And if you'd like to join us in the Zoom room, you're welcome to do so. All you have to do is go to our, our Facebook page and go to events and click on Sunday School. There's a link that will bring you right into the classroom and the password is study, all caps. So if you'd like to come and be a part of the conversation, we welcome you to join us on this morning. But if not, we thank God for you also. Amen. So um, our lesson today is trials and denials, trials and denials. And the lesson text is coming from uh, the book of John. So those of you don't don't have a, uh, a book, if you would like to read uh, the scriptures that we're coming from, you can turn your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 18, verses 15 through 27. And there were some related scriptures from Matthew's chapter 26, uh, uh, um, verses 59 through 75, Mark chapter 14, verse 55 through 72, and Luke chapter 22, verses 55 through 71. In our golden text, reads, Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And that's Mark 14 and 62. So at this time, we're going to ask if there be any prayer requests. Yes, can you keep our Tondra and John Cahill uplifting your prayers? Um, my family, <clears throat> uh, partake of Church of Christ Ministry, Pastor and First Lady, uh, our youth, Dyson family, and Katia. All right, any other prayer requests? Continue praying for the sick and the shut in and the, the homeless and senior citizens pray for our young people and continue to keep uh, my unsaved portion of my family in prayer. Yeah. Just keep my family in prayer, please. All right. Uh, <clears throat> continue to keep me in prayer, uh, my family in prayer. Also, um, unsaved portion of my family is keep... Uh, Keep our country in prayer, those things that are escalating over in the uh in uh near, near Russia, uh Ukraine, uh just things things escalate. Just keep that situation in prayer. Uh, pray for those that have been uh infected by this storm that hit most of the country over the weekend. Uh, pray that uh you know uh, the power would be restored and uh, situations would get better. Amen. Pray for our soldiers that have also gone over there. That God will bring them back home safely. Yes. All right. If there be no more prayer requests, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your love and kindness. Thank you for your grace and your multitudes of tender mercy. We just give you glory on this morning, Lord God, and thank you for allowing us to be here. What those that are watching by Facebook, Lord God. Father, you've heard the prayer requests, some spoken and unspoken, God, but we know that you are God that answers prayer. We know that you're a God that knows what we stand in need of before we even ask. We know, Lord God, that you know all about those situations, Lord God. And Father, we just pray, Lord God, that you will have your way in the midst, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So we pray, Lord God, that you will touch each and every uh, family that is represented here on the on the uh, Zoom call today and those that are watching by Facebook, Lord God, whether it be a financial need, Lord God, we pray that you will make a way, God, whether it be healing in their body, we pray that you will touch, Lord God, whether it be deliverance, Lord God, we pray that you will deliver them from drugs or alcohol, whatever addiction it may be, God. And Lord God, we pray for those, Lord God, that are gone over and uh, overseas, Lord God, to be support for uh, Ukraine. We pray that you bring those soldiers back home safely, Lord God. We pray that you de-escalate that situation, God. Move upon the hearts of men, Lord God. 
in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those that are affected by the weather that uh, took place over the weekend, Father, we pray that you will restore, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch those family members that are bereaved. Pray that you will comfort them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just ask you to have your way in the midst of each and every situation, each and every challenge that we face in our lives, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to bless the lesson on today. Lord God, have your way. Open our understanding as we go through the lesson, Lord God. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen, amen. All right. I'm going to ask if uh, Deacon Edwards would do our Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born unto Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. There he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from which he's to come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. All right, we thank Deacon Edwards for the Apostle Creed. So today's aim, the facts is to examine how Jesus is tried by the high priest while Peter denies knowing him. And the principle is to recognize Christ's faithfulness in situations where men were unfaithful. And the application is to always turn to Christ when others turn away, knowing that he is always faithful. All right. In our lesson text, we have three outlines. Uh, first outline is Peter's first denial, John 18, 15 through 18. The second outline is Jesus's first trial, John 18, 19 through 24. And the third outline is Peter's further denials. And that's John 18, 25 through 27. And before we read the scripture text, I want to just read this part of the uh, of an introduction or a summary of somewhat of this lesson. It says it was worth, it was the worst night of Jesus's life. How did he handle it? What did he do? To whom did he run? On this night, everyone turned their backs on him, while his enemies put in motion the plot to kill him. Jesus had no one to turn to. <clears throat> one of his disciples betrayed him and the others abandoned him in Gethsemane. To make matters worse, one of his closest disciples would deny him even knowing him before the night was over. We too sometimes face rejection from people, both friend and foe alike. When we are rejected by people, we can turn to Christ because he will never reject those who come to him in faith and love. You can know that he loves you no matter what kind of situation you may go through or mistakes you may have made. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And he is, he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Man, God is not like man. Amen. Man will turn their back on you. Man will let you down. But we know that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. All right, we got 13 verses, so I'm going to ask if we could, uh, I guess, break these up. Um, I'm not sure, Sister Alicia, if you are available to read. I can read uh, as many, I can read, start it out for you, as many as you need. Okay, if you want to take the first two verses, Deacon Edwards, you can take the next two, Elder Bostic, the next two. Mother Melton, the next two, and Missionary Pat, the next two, and I guess I will finish out the rest. John 18, 15, and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art, art not thou also one of 
this man's disciples, he says, I am not. And the servant and officer stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed his, himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why ask thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said to them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer thy the high priest so. Okay, let me go ahead and read it. I'll read, I'll read. Go ahead. Jesus answered um, him, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if will, why smitest thou me? And Ananias had sent him bound into Cephas, the high priest. And Simon and Peter. Simeon, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, Simon, and Simon Peter stood and warned himself. They said, Therefore, unto him are not thou also the one his uh, disciples? He denied it and said, Am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kin his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then uh, denied again, and immediately the uh, cock crowed. All right. Thank you all for your uh, the reading. Uh, so we're going to jump right into the first outline. First outline, uh, Peter's first denial, trying to follow. That's John chapter 18, verse 15 through 16. If someone could uh, start us off. When Jesus was seized in the garden, the disciples fled into the night. But true to his bold nature, though cautiously, Peter followed afar off, that is, at a distance, to see what was going to happen. While we cannot certain, most think that the reference to another disciple was to none other than the author of this gospel, the Apostle John. But some think it was another unnamed disciple. F.F. Bruce suggested it was an unknown Jerusalem disciple who had access to high society. Whether it was an unnamed disciple or John, uh, he was known to the high priest. We do not know what the connection was, but it did make it possible for Peter to be granted access to the courtyard of his residence. It was likely that the high priest and possibly other members of his family reside in, in or near the temple courts. In this time of Christ, the entire temple complex covered about 36 acres. It was only after the other disciples spoke to the woman who watched the gate at the courtyard and Peter was able to gain admission to the courtyard. As is still true, access to both people and places is often contingent on whom we know. We even refer to these people as gatekeepers. <clears throat> Basically, this is just saying how Peter was following Jesus because he was inquisitive what was going to happen to him. Yeah, he was doing mm -hmm. he was he was in a dangerous position. He was following from a distance. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't it, it, you know this uh, pretty good uh, information, but it's not. Uh, sound as to who that other disciple was but however we do see peter uh trying to like you said being inquisitive trying to see what was going on in a sense but from a distance any other comments any other questions 
I, I, I wanted to say that um, it, it was interesting as Peter wanted to, was inquisitive um, to see what was gonna happen to Jesus. But as we go through the lesson, you know, it's funny how, you know, you can easily just, you know, and I won't say it, but it's so easy how you, you turn your back on somebody, but let, yet you're following them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> the curiosity, you know, just want to see what was going to happen. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, as you said, when we get to the lesson, more than the lesson, you see, we all know the denial, but still he was, he was nearby and uh, turned his back on him, but yet still wanted to see what was going to go on. Yeah, as long as things was going well, it was okay. But then as soon as uh, he saw trouble and Jesus was in trouble, then he, 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 he scattered. I mean, not scattered, but, you know, he turned his back on him. Same thing happens today. As long as you doing good, you got friends. But then when trouble comes, where your friends are, where are they? They leave you. Yeah. The first thing they tell you, I told you not to do that. No, yeah. No, yeah. No, you want to watch it, but if it comes out good, yeah, I was with yeah. him. I was with right. him, but when it's bad, I told him not to do it. Yeah, especially uh, in a situation like this where, you know, life or death is is uh, at stake. Um, people, you know, you don't know how people are going to respond that say they're your friends whenever it comes to a situation like that. Uh, even the Bible says, well, you know, we, we'll, you know, uh, some would even die for somebody. But so, you know, but it, sometimes people, you don't know how people going to respond. You know, most people won't give their life for another person or stand up for another person or, die, you know, that ride or die, as some people say, hey, that's a good saying, but how many people would do that? That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to stop saying we're a ride and die person, you know, <laughs> exactly. can't keep saying that. And that's what Peter said, in a sense, Lord, right. you, you know, same thing. But as we get into the lesson, um, I think it shares some, some part of that as well. Um, but we don't know how we're going to respond, We've, if, even if we got into a situation like that. All right, let's go on to the next part, standing in denial, standing in denial, John 18, 17 to 18. As the woman let Peter into the courtyard, she asked him if he too was not one of Jesus' disciples. At this point, Peter swiftly denied that he was one of Jesus' disciples. He would eventually deny the Lord three times as foretold by Jesus in all four gospels. The night was cool, so, so those gathered had built a fire to keep warm. Peter was likely trying to blend in with those present and he therefore stood close to them. This decision would eventually set him up to again be challenged about knowing Jesus leading to his further denials of him. You know, what this is saying is, yeah, about Peter, you know, trying to blend in with the other crowd, I guess, so nobody would recognize him, but somebody did recognize him and ask him, you know, was he one of Jesus' disciples? And of course, like I said, he began to deny him again. He said Peter swiftly, swiftly did not. He, he didn't even give it thought. He didn't even give it thought. <laughs> I laughed at that because you know how sometimes, well, when we were kids, when our parents asked us, we could easily roll off our mouth. No, we didn't do it. So we wouldn't get in trouble, you know? So when you said swiftly, I laughed at it because you know, a lie can easily just roll off your off your tongue. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then the the, the uh, teacher's book says the way the late the the uh, woman formulated the question, it was easy for him to say no. Yeah. Uh, you know, so he he didn't have to think about it, or he just quickly said no. Um, but again, it says Peter was was likely trying to blend in with those present, you know, trying to, you know, we can't blend in, you know, as Christians, as born again believers, we can't blend in with the world. 
Uh, right. if, if God's anointing is on us, God's calling us on our life, we can try to blend in, but we're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Right. You know, uh, and, and, and Peter, in a sense, you know, being a disciple of Jesus, you know, he, everybody knew in a sense that, you know, he was different than the way that, than they were. And, uh, but yet he denied it. Yes. All right. Any other questions, any other comments? If not, we're going to move on to Jesus's first trial, the interrogation and reply. And that's John chapter 18, 19 in 21. Jesus first first hearing was before Anas, the former high priest and the father in law of Capius, the current high priest. Anas questioned Jesus about his disciples and and his doctrine and the doctrine. In response to the high priest inquiry about his teaching, Jesus boldly referred him to what he had taught openly in public places of worship, both in synagogues as well as in the Jerusalem temple. It was not as though Jesus had been running a covert operation. All he had taught and done had been in open public form. And what he, like I said, what Jesus did, he just told him what he was doing. He wasn't hiding. He was doing right. his father's work. He was doing his father's work. So, you know, would they expect him to change up and say he was doing something different? I, I don't know, but he, he professed what he was doing. And he was doing it, it, he was doing it to everywhere, to everyone, you know. He wasn't picking up uh, Pacific people. He was doing his father's work. Yeah, and, and like it, like the lesson said, he, he wasn't he wasn't hiding. So you know he was out front and open of what he was doing. But uh, somehow they they seemed to want to question him and wanted him to you know to say something different. I guess. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They wanted him to okay. Are you going to change up? You know, or, or deny what you were doing or whatever. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they was uh, nitpicking, still trying to find some reason mm -hmm. yeah. to, uh, to, to, to get rid of Jesus. So they, they had to they find a reason. They yeah, had to they find did. a reason first. They had to find a reason, right? They had to I'm find sorry. a reason, right? Trying to fabricate, want him to fabricate, want him to convict himself of something, of doing some wrongdoing. You know, mm -hmm. you know sometimes they get, as you go to today's society, some people... <laughs> Um, I'm not trying to get off like first 48 people to change up their story and then all of a sudden, no, we got the evidence that you did this. They didn't have any evidence that he was doing anything wrong. So why should he change up his story? This is what mm -hmm. I've been doing. You know, this is what I've been you know, preaching the gospel and I'm not going to, you know, deny it. I'm not going to deny myself. Yeah, it's it, the lesson and the teacher's part it, it talked about uh since he uh, Christ had already had numerous confrontations with various religious leaders, especially the Pharisees, and it says Ananias was probably trying to decide whether his teaching were a threat to the Sadducees. And, and but the thing is, the Sadducees and the Pharisees they had differences anyway. But again, you know, when the enemy comes against you, it doesn't matter what their dif differences are, as long as they can come together on one common thing. To, to destroy you. And that's what they were trying to do to Jesus. Yeah, and then it also said this was Ananias making a preliminary examination. So he yeah. really didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. He was just right. trying to build a case, basically. Yeah, right. Trying to see what he can find out. Trying to see what he can find out. And 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 D, by the way, that's Caiaphas. Caiaphas. Okay, Caiaphas, okay. <laughs> I know some of these names are tricky, man. I'm telling you. So, uh, all right, can we go on to the next one? Abusive treatment. And that's John chapter 18 and 22. If there'd be no more comments or questions. Abusive treatment. Early in his ministry, Christ had said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. By this, he meant the form 
that from an Old Testament legal standpoint, a person's testimony about himself does not verify any fact as true. Some objectives uh, corroborating testimony is required to establish a fact as true. For example, if one person accused another of a crime, but the accused person denied the char charges, it is merely one person's word against another. Nothing has been uh, legally proven. Additional corroborating testimony must be presented to establish that the accused is in fact guilty of that crime. The above being true, it was not irregular for that Jesus would answer the high priest by referring him to those who had actually heard him teach. A considerable amount of disformation, disinformation about Jesus and his teaching was circulating in Jerusalem at this time. He therefore told the high priest that he could, he should consult those who had actually heard him on various occasions. At this, one of the officers of the high priest slapped Jesus across the face with the palm of his hand. The Lord's indirect answer to the high priest was seen as insubordination and, dis and disrespect. This was just the beginning of the abuse Jesus would endure at the hands of both the Jewish and the Roman authorities throughout his trial and execution. This is uh, when you want to try to get information from someone, which they were trying to do, you know, if they take on the abusive act of slapping Jesus in his face, you know, and Jesus, he, what he was saying was true, but they still, you know, wanted more information. And he was telling them, you know, the, the, that he bear witness of himself. Um, and my witness is not true, but, you know, the things that we say, you know, um, is in fact, as true, it's true. So, you know, basically that's what it was, is it was the beginning of the abusiveness that uh, was being taken on with Jesus because, you know, they didn't have any evidence. So they were still trying to, the abusive part was to make him say what they wanted to hear so that they could use it for their advantage. They wanted to hear him say, say it out of his own mouth. But again, you know, I believe the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let his word be established. So there has to be a co collaborating uh, testimony to uh, to make it correct. So if there's nothing to corroborate, corroborate with what was being said of him, then it's not true. So by, that's why he said what he said. He wasn't being smart. He was just saying, hey, you know, if I tell you this, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't mean it's true because I said it. But you got to, you know. You know, go to the people that see me do these things and, and they can testify whether or not it's true because they, you know, the, the, these are witnesses and the guy kind of basically took it the wrong way and thought he was being smart and slapped him up in, in the face. And which is, you know, really, you know, unnecessary, but that's the way they treated people back then. All right. Any other questions, any other comments? <clears throat> Y'all kind of quiet today. All right. So what happened to him that slapped <laughs> What happened to him that slapped Jesus? I don't know. He probably would be. <laughs> no, just Merciful <laughs> father. You know, he just didn't know how much danger his life was in. Yeah, well, he didn't. And the thing thing is, like Jesus said, to those that uh, that uh, crucified him, he said, Lord, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what. Yes, they did. Yes, he did. And he didn't, he didn't really realize, but he thought he was doing his job, just like Paul did, thought he was doing what he was supposed to do. Um, but again, uh, you know, there's so many people out here now in the same condition, uh, think that they are doing the right thing. Uh, and, but doing the wrong thing. Uh, you have so many people that come against Christ in so many different ways. I mean, it's just unnumerable. And uh, they, they, they talk uh, negatively about the Christianity and a lot of other things, but yet uh, they don't really realize what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, guess what? Man, man will be without excuse. That's right. The invisible things of God has been made known to them. 
you know, so. And, and the Bible always said, I mean, says that uh, we'll, uh, we'll be hated for Christ's sake. And it's like when they say when somebody slap you or spit in your face, that's a, a terrible humiliation. Yeah, you know, uh, a terrible way. You know, it's like you got that hatred, so much hatred in your heart. You just, it's the worst thing you can do to a person is to spit on them or slap them in the face. And it's like, you know, they really hated Jesus for, you know, I guess all the thing, good things that he had come to, to and done. They, they knew what, he, you know, they, like uh, we the, the outline before that, they pretty much knew what, you know, what Jesus did and what he stood for, things right. that he did. They, some of them probably even witnessed the miracles. But yet they were trying to find a way to have him admit, you know, mm -hmm. certain things that uh, you know, who he said he was uh, out of his own mouth and, and trying to find a way to trap him. Um, but again, you know, that wasn't even what that what that guy did. That wasn't even a form of interrogation. That was just that the guy didn't like the, Jesus's response. And Jesus right. response yeah. to a point, you know, you know, you can't testify. I can't testify of myself. And say who I said I am, you know, um, but or things that I've done, but ask the people that witnessed it. <sighs> he didn't say it that way, but he basically said it in the sense that you know, it's, you know, which was true. You know, if he if he bear witness of himself, then his his testimony, you know, he has nobody to co cooperate his his testimony other than the people that have seen it, and those are people that can testify of it. <sighs> All right. Honest challenge. We can get somebody to read that one. Honest challenge, John chapter 18, verse 23. In response to this abuse, Jesus challenged his attacker to give him a valid reason for the attack. Since Jesus had said nothing evil and had meant no respect to the office of the high priest, why had the officer struck him? Christ was innocent of all wrongdoing, and the officer's reaction was reaction was unwarranted. Women was okay. My my glasses trick me up sometimes. This was just one of many violations of the law that occurred during the trial of Jesus. Actually, we we basically just covered all that. Why, you know, would the officer strike Jesus in the face? Yes. Yeah, like you said, he didn't he didn't say anything wrong. He answered the question. Right. So, in the teacher's book, it has something on here, which I'm gonna try to see if I can do a study on. It said that, that there were 15 obvious violations of Jewish and Roman law. In the proceedings against Jesus, I thought that was that stood out really, really big you know, when I was reading that part. But uh, one make me want to kind of do a study of that and see what. The, but that's a lot, you know. Violations. How can you? It, it, and it is just like our judicial system now, and even especially, uh, um, you know, years back where you know people are set on falsely accusing somebody, and and want to see that those individuals. Uh, pay the price for something that they didn't do. Um, and they will bend the law and the rules and, and, and manipulate evidence and all kinds of stuff just to just to see that person guilty. Um, just so we, we live in a corrupt society. When people got their heart set against you, it, it doesn't matter what the, what you do. Uh, they're going to do what they can to try to uh, prove their point. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Abrupt Dismissal, John chapter 18, verses 24. At this point, Annas had apparently heard enough. He sent Jesus to the current high priest, his son-in-law, Caiaphas. Caiaphas, did I get it right this time, my elder? Caiaphas. Caiaphas, okay. Well, that's the end right there. Hmm. I guess because um uh like you say, and it's, you couldn't get you couldn't get you know 
couldn't uh, get Jesus to say what he wanted to hear. So he mm. was through with him, just went on to send somebody else to deal with him. All right, any other questions, any other comments? So that would be the same as our judiciary um, system here. You take it to the low court first, and then once you can't resolve it, you take it to the higher court, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Jesus didn't have any any anybody. Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't have no public defender. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things uh, says concerning Jesus' trial before Caiaphas, uh, the other gospel gives considerable detail. It says that since not all the members of the Sanhedrin had been present to conduct business, it may have been a handy a hand picked group that would simply uh, rubber stamp the wishes of An Ananias and Caiaphas. Uh, that's, that's, you know, in other words, because, you know, we all know that they did this in the wee hours of the morning and it, you know, so everybody, they couldn't get all the people that were supposed to have been there, um, uh, you know, as far as the Sanhedrin. So they just handpicked anybody and said, okay, you know, I'm gonna deputize you, I'm gonna deputize you, I'm gonna deputize you just so they can prove their point. And try to uh, to find them guilty. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Any other comments? All right. We're moving right along. Then. All right. Um, third and final outline: Peter's further denial. Uh, denial two. One John, uh, I'm sorry. When we go, did I cut somebody off? No, sweetie. Okay. One of the servants standing near the fire with Peter just happened to be related to Malchus, who had had his ear cut off by Peter. This servant had oh, also been- Oh, sweetheart. The denial, <laughs> denial too. To, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still warming himself at the fire along with some servants and soldiers. Someone asked him, art thou, art not thou also one of his disciples? As he had done previously, Peter denied Jesus by asserting, I am not. Mm -hmm. All right, any, any comments, any questions? Did, when Peter first denied Jesus, didn't he know already? Didn't Jesus tell him that he would three times? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it just it just goes to show you in our humanity, uh, you know, we don't know how we're going to respond in, in certain situations. Um, in the teacher's book, uh, it says, um, it goes on to read a lot more, but this part says, this, this is a humbling lesson for everyone who relies on his own self-confidence in the Christian life. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 says, Paul warns us, let him that thinketh, thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. It is also through the grace and power of the Holy Spirit that we can preserve, uh, persevere in our faithfulness to Christ. So we got to understand uh, one that, Peter did not have the Holy Ghost at that time, but yet he made a bold statement and saying that he would die for Christ. He wouldn't, he wouldn't. And, and Jesus was just letting him know, you know, because he knew in advance already, he's God in the flesh that Peter was going to do this, but it just lets us know, you know, really, like I said, a humbling lesson that we can't put our mouth in certain situations and say what we're going to do or what we're not going to do. If, if we were in a certain situation as someone else, we don't know. We don't know uh, how we're going to respond uh, if we get put in certain situations. We just pray that God will not allow us to uh, give in. You know, there's going to come a time where um, pray prayerfully none of us will be here uh, when, you know, they have to take the mark of the beast or even be beheaded. Mm. You know, uh, you know, they have to denounce Christ. You know, people people can say, I would never denounce Christ, but OK, but you get in that situation what will the what will the end matter be? And uh, we just pray that God give us the uh, the strength, the Holy Spirit, like it says here, the, the, uh, the grace and power of the Holy Ghost that we can persevere in our faithfulness to Christ. 
Um, again, like I said, you know, if we don't live for Christ now, we're going to have to die for him later. Uh, so, uh, it's, it is a humbling lesson, you know, you know, I always thought about that when Peter denied him, you know, people say, how, how could he deny me? He said, Hey, after he seen all the miracles, after he walked with Christ, well, we don't know how Peter felt when he was in that situation. You know, uh, he may have felt that his life was threatened. If he admitted that he knew Christ, that he would be on trial. Um, don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can, even though you said you couldn't participate, but go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> I've, been, I've been listening the whole morning. Um, just about. Um, you know, I, it's something you said about when we say we live for Christ, you know, um, we we have to we have to die to some things. Uh, yep. and, and that's the Bible talks about that. You know, when we walk in the flesh all the time, we won't be prepared uh, for the spiritual warfare. And that's that's really what we're talking about, the spiritual warfare that we experience now. And you were talking about the mark of the beast. If we are around, that could happen at any time. That could start today. It could start tomorrow, right? Uh, that whole, that whole uh, period where, you know, um, we don't know when the Son of Man shall return and, and rapture the church, but again, uh, that's why the spirit man has to be strong. The spirit man has to be fed every day, uh, all the time. And a lot of times, uh, you know, going back to the <clears throat> what kind of started the conversation, Peter denying Christ, uh, that denial, yes, Jesus knew it because he knew Peter didn't have the Holy Spirit. He knew he knew Peter was rambunctious. Remember, he cut a man's ear off, right? Uh, he was worn. He was worn with the. He was worn with the flesh still. So that's why Jesus. He knew Peter couldn't stand up against what was, uh, what was to come without the Holy Ghost. He he knew none of his disciples would. That's why he said he's going to send back a comforter, and, and that word comforter uh, is bigger than than it than it seems to a lot of people, you know, uh, is, is just that we're in a spirit, this is a spiritual warfare and we gotta remember that. So you gotta feed the spirit man. You know, the fleshly man gonna get fed uh, as uh, I won't say no more, uh, but this, the fleshly man will always get fed by food and, and, and desires uh, if we let all that stuff in. But the spirit man seems to, to hunger and uh, should be hungering after righteousness. But anyway, I just wanted to throw uh, a few tidbits in there. Amen. And and it will come down to a decision like that. Like you said, if you had, if you you know, I've always heard people use this example. Um, you know, as two 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 dogs. You know, when when you're natural and when you're spiritual. If you feed the natural, and and the two of them get into a fight. Which one you think is going to win? People always say, "Oh, the spiritual is going to win because he's hungry." No, the spiritual going to lose because he's weak. He's weak. <laughs> All right. If we can move on to the next outline, if there be any other questions, any other comments. Denial three, John eighteen twenty six through twenty seven. One of the servants standing near the fire with Peter just happened to be related to Malchus, who had had his ear cut off by Peter. This servant had also been present in the garden when Jesus was arrested. But since it had been dark and there had been a large number of people there, he was apparently not completely certain that Peter was actually the one who had attacked Malchus. He nevertheless was suspicious. So he asked Peter pointly, did not I see thee in the garden with Jesus? Peter denied Christ again and the rooster immediately crew, crowed. Most believers can remember times when they, they have in some manner denied knowing Jesus. The world is hostile to the claims of Christ and likewise hostile to those 
who follow him. We must therefore be ever vigilant concerning temptations to deny Christ that are continually that are continually before us in the world. Concerning Satan's trick, Paul declares, we are not ignorant of his devices, but bold, reliant on the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us will give us courage to represent Christ as faithful ambassadors. Amen. Any comments or questions you want to add? No. Anyone? <clears throat> well, now listen, it was saying how um, when he approached Peter, that Peter actually started, um, when he backed up and denied, he started cussing and swearing. Um, you know, <clears throat> that's how um, a lot of people before the Holy Ghost comes in, you know, when they're um, trying to defend themselves or trying to not uh, be the one to be noticed, you know, the first thing we'll do is start cussing, you know, swearing, you know, being loud, being um, obnoxious, you know, trying to throw off that um, <clears throat> I told you I'm not the one, you know. So I found that kind of it kind of um, stuck out with me on that. But then it also was saying, you know, how um, when Peter, um, even though he was who he was, he still had compassion because it, when Jesus had, like I think Sister Alicia said, how, um, you know, Jesus had already told him he was going to deny him. And then when Peter realized that he had denied Jesus the third time, it said that uh, he went out uh, weeping, you know, crying, you know, that he realized, you know, wow, Jesus had said this to me, it was going to happen, and it actually had, and he became aware of how he denied him three times, so, you know, he was sorrowfully at that point, so those are the two things that I stood out with me, um, this one. Now, I was getting ready to ask him, once Peter realized when he heard it, uh, the, the, the cock crow, you know, you know that he, that it came to him that what Jesus had told him that he's been denied three times. Yeah, what what kind of stood out to me, uh, you know, the first two denials, it was, Angle said it was easy for for him to say, but you know, they wasn't sure, they wasn't certain. Mm -hmm. You know, we we were just talking about how they had to have cooperating. Uh, testimony, you know, uh, to, 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 you know, and Jesus said, hey, go ask them. But here we have somebody who seen Peter in the garden, right? Actually seen him and said, hey, wouldn't, wouldn't you, you know, wouldn't you in the garden with him? And that had to strike home to Peter because the other people didn't see him. They just knew that they may have sounded like a Galilean, looked like a Galilean, you know, but this guy actually saw Peter in the garden and you know it was dark and everything but when he pinpointed and said didn't i see you in the garden you know imagine how peter may have felt and that that probably prompted him to swear because he was adamantly denying now because somebody seen him mm -hmm. um that's that's kind of stood out to me mm -hmm. uh, that lesson. when the guy said did not i see thee in the garden with jesus um it's no, there's no way to get around that. You were seen, you know, you, you know, you got a witness, but yet he still denied. I just uh, want to uh, kind of bring that home with, you know, with in the days, these days and times, you know, God has given us his word. And when we oh, disobey God's word, uh, conscious or, you know, the Holy Spirit will, you know, let us know, you know, as soon as you commit that sin, right away, your conscience will, will bring you back to what the word says, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. We really thank God. Um, but it's it's kind of funny, though, you, know, you still got people that like that today, they get 
they had the smoking gun in their hand and the body laying next to them. They say, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Uh, but you know, that's how the enemy, uh, the enemy tricks us. Um, but we, but again, we thank God for his faithfulness to us. You know, even, even, uh, Jesus going through this trial, you know, he was still, uh, faithful when, as the, as the lesson said, when, when, uh, men are unfaithful, you know, we they abandon him, but he will never leave us. All right. If, if there'd be no more questions or comments, it's 959. We thank those that are, uh, that are watched by Facebook and, and join us on this morning. We thank God for you. Uh, hope you got something, uh, profitable from the lesson on today. And uh, if you'd like to be uh, to give to this ministry, you can do so by going to the GiveLify app, um, search for Partakers Church of Christ Ministries. Um, and if you don't have the uh, GiveLify app, you can also go to our website at www.partakerschurch.org and go to the menu option and click on Give Now, and it will take you to the GiveLify app where you'll be able to be a blessing to our ministry. We thank you in advance. And if you'd like to join us at 11 o'clock, at 4516 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland, you can do so. We all are taking precautionary measures. Uh, God has been blessing us uh, for this whole duration. So we welcome you and, and love to see you come out and fellowship with us on this morning. That said, we ask if uh, Deacon Edwards will dismiss us on this morning. Okay. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable with doctrine for reproof for correction, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. God bless everyone. Hope to see you at 11. Amen. God bless you all.